City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And today I am speaking with an acclaimed artist. She does it all. She is a singer, a songwriter, an actress, a podcast host, a renaissance woman, the one and only Corey English. Hello, Corey. How are you? Hi, Will. I'm good. I wish people saw our little off-camera chat. I feel like I was speaking with a longtime girlfriend. You're, <laughs> you're amazing. You have such a light about you. And Corey, you know, I, I'm so excited that the audience got just a sneak peek of your incredible talent with your song, Feeling Like Christmas, created in the middle of a freaking pandemic. Talk to me about the impetus for, and dare I say, it is a bop. And also, you know, yeah, how it all just like came together. Oh my gosh. Uh, the whole thing was so much fun to create. I had formed a partnership with this winery called Dow Vineyards and and released a video called Rosé All Day out on their epically amazing vineyard. And I just fell in love with the family and the story behind the family and the wines happened to be amazing. And I happen to be like a, a big time wine drinker. Uh, <laughs> and so we just formed this friendship and in and, and partnership. And um, one of the proprietors of the winery, uh, uh, George Dow, introduced me to another artist named Elizabeth Lyons. And he introduced us because he just felt like we had similar energies, that we would get along really well. And he kind of threw out there, hey, what do you guys think about a Christmas song? Which I loved. Um, and so I brought in my good friend, Danny Myrick, who's an amazing songwriter. And the three of us had never sat down together, but we sat down in Nashville and this song kind of just fell out. And then we couldn't get it out of our heads. And we had all these big plans to shoot a music video and release it. And this was all, of course, we wrote it late 2019 because we were trying to really be prepared right because whoever plans a year in advance for a release like you're supposed to but we wrote it during christmas 2019 because my house was all decorated and we were getting into the spirit of christmas 
So we thought what better time and now we've given ourselves all this lead time to do it right. No, no, 2020 happened. Oh, that pandemic thing. Best laid plans for everyone in the world fell through. But Corey, so, what I love so much about the song, it's not only so freaking catchy, but you can just see the camaraderie there. I mean, like, it's kind of like those lightning in a bottle moments that we as artists sometimes get, you know, God, once, twice, three times in a career. Are there any other songs that you're already collaborating with them on? Uh, with those two? Yeah. With Danny and Elizabeth? We actually wrote two Christmas songs in one day during that original writing session. And the other one is just this really sweet song about Christmas morning, which to me is this moment in time each year where you're surrounded by family and it's magical when you're a child. And now I'm getting to see that magic through the eyes of my children who are, I have, I have three kids. I have an eight-year-old, a three-year-old and a baby, a little eight month old wait, baby. You're a baby. Like, oh, oh no. We're no, not going no. there, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it with this Dow winery does, but is there like a serum in the It must wine? have. I was at the Fountain of Youth, the Fountain of Rosé out at Dow Vineyards. You know, you just take a sip of that and, you know, you don't you even wake up looking like you. <laughs> okay, wait, I want to, I want to lean into some of your acting credits. I mean, you've done so much. Talk to me about, talk to me about your acting career, how you got started and some maybe favorite moments throughout oh, wow. it. Yeah, I feel like... I have been in the entertainment industry since I was a really little kid. My dad was a musician, so I grew up, you know, I was like the baby in the bar. Yeah. You I, know? It was in your bone marrow, literally, like you yeah. couldn't not be a part of it. It's pretty much true. And so I was always doing something on the stage or commercials or voiceover from the time I was a pretty little kid. And then I did this show called Feed Your Mind, which was with TBS as when I, I started doing shows for them when I was about nine and continued to do shows for them until my early 20s. And it was an incredibly formative experience over those years because we traveled, we spent time in Africa with a skeleton crew of, you know, about six people. So one of our producers would hold the boom and we were making it happen and on, on this shoestring budget, but the experiences um opened my eyes to so many things in the world and i was very fortunate to have teachers who understood the value of that kind of education so i would cut chunks out of my textbooks and take them with me overseas and that was that was such a big part of my experience in the entertainment industry for so long but then it was also really important that I get a degree. And so I went to UGA, I got a degree in broadcast journalism and then promptly just went to LA and started working in television and film and never used to the broadcast journalism uh, degree, but it meant something to me and my family that I had it. I actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna argue with you here because okay. now that you're doing podcasts, correct? I mean, and also wouldn't you say that journalistic curiosity, that childlike sense of wonder, whether it's, you know, you as a kid on Christmas morning, seeing it now through the eyes of your kid, but also what a beautiful thing, Corey, that you've been able to do, which is throughout all of your career, like before the interview, I was like, okay, Corey has literally picked up all of these tools since she was a kid in the entertainment industry and now has them in her tool belt as not only this renaissance woman that you can then dive into so many different aspects of the entertainment industry, but also as a mom now, no one can ever take away some of these big life experiences that you got over and over again as a kid. Yeah, I thank you so much for saying that. I really do feel like my whole goal in the entertainment industry was not, I've never really been an attention seeker kind of person. I was a shy kid. I kind of had to grow into my comfort level with talking to people just like this. I wasn't always comfortable with it, um, but I always felt like my goal was to do something I loved for a living. And that was my only goal. Mm. And I realized that in order to do that, I needed to diversify my entertainment industry portfolio, just like you would diversify your stock portfolio. That's right. So that meant that I was chasing out, you know, if I had a, a pause, uh, in my on-camera career, I was doing voiceover or writing music, and then I'm just a curious person. So I think, I think you might be right. Some of that broadcast journalism degree it, it sparked a lot of that. Okay, what is the interesting piece of this? Um, so I think that's really insightful of you to mention. 
And now it's kind of crazy. My podcast, it's called Hi, My Name is Mom. And I literally do all of the editing and not all of the editing, but I have a partner who is two partners who are amazingly helpful with everything, but we are a three woman shop. You know, we're doing everything um, to get the podcast out there. And so it, it is true that those, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, you need something from Photoshop. Cool. We can pull something together. And those kinds of little skill sets in an entertainment career become invaluable because a lot of times it's not like you're working with some huge budget and team, I know. especially in this day and age when you can put a show on YouTube. Well, I mean, even look at what most people had to do during the pandemic. They had to pivot. They're mastering and mixing their own records. They're, yeah. they're building their own records, recording studios. We're now in a post-pandemic world, hopefully all, fully sooner rather than later. Artists are basically getting to rely on themselves and don't have to pay that out of pocket that they used to. Yeah, that's one thing I, I was... I had <laughs> circling back to the music video that's talking yes. about drinking wine. I ended up being pregnant the during the pandemic. So we shot this music video in my living room where I'm eight months pregnant. Uh, but I, I during the last few weeks of my pregnancy, I thought, what better time than right now when I can't really, I was trying to just be really safe at home. And I also wanted something creative to do. So I, I took Ryan Tedder's music production class. And that's been something else that's super exciting because I can take music, I can take a song I wrote and create a demo. Now, now I'm not saying that the level I'm doing it at is, is to, you know, but, but, Ryan, me, but you're doing it, but you're doing it. And, and you're fun. actually, and you're not overthinking and you put out the product. And, and I think again, I think I could speak with you forever. And before I ask my final question, I want to let everyone know for more on the incredible, incredible Corey English. You can read more about her right below this video. Corey, you mentioned your kids. And also throughout this interview, I can't help but think about the young Corys of the world out there. Some young Corys out there who might be told they're too much, who might be told that their dreams are too big, who might be told, who do you think you are to go into this industry that is gonna constantly say no? You are a perfect example, I think of my niece. I think of the young women in my life who can look up to someone like you, who does it all, has it all on their terms through the mess in the ebbs and the flows and all. My question for you, what advice would you give to the young Corys of the world? Some of the best advice I received when I was young was, and this was straight from my dad, I was very lucky to have parents who supported what I was doing, but he encouraged me to, if I, if I wanted to chase something, to do it, because regret is way worse than failure. And you'll never know if you don't try. So there are a lot of people out there that will be naysayers in life in general, particularly in the entertainment industry. But we are fortunate, especially for the young people coming up in the enter entertainment industry now, it's so open, it's opened up. You used to have to fit a niche. You know, movie, movie stars didn't do TV, didn't do voiceover, and you had to look a certain way and be a certain thing. And now the diversity, the openness um, has, and, and then the ability to make things on your own has changed the entire industry. So I feel like, you have to keep your feet on the ground, stay grounded with your family, your friends, whoever those grounding forces for you are. Hang on to those people who encourage you and lift you up and are your net to only fall so far. Hang on to those forces in your life and then go for it. And you decide when you don't want to do when and if you don't want to do it anymore. And and what your goal and what success looks like for you. So maybe like for me, it's not it was never being you know, a celebrity, it was, I want to do this for a living. I want to get to wake up and do this every day. Corey, you're an inspiration. Um, and you mentioned net, and that's exactly how I kind of feel about Phoenix 360. It's a net for artists and a safe place for them to not only create, in, but connect. And as a collective, to, you know, change the conversation of what it is to be an artist to finally, for those who aren't able to, make a living. And I want to let everyone know to share Corey's personal Phoenix app on their home screen. All you have to do is the following. Go to https colon forward slash forward slash Corey English. That's C-O-R-R-I English dot Phoenix dot band. Click that add button. Then click that add to home screen button. And voila, next to your favorite apps, you will have Corey's beautiful face. 
in a one-stop shop as this app is, you will be able to follow all of Corey's socials, what she's up to, whether it's on screen, behind the scenes, in the airwaves on podcasts, or drinking wine in a new music video. Corey English, I'm so grateful we met. Me too. You have to let me know if you're in Nashville. We got to hang out. I know. Next time I visit my brother, I'm going to go to you first. Yes. I love it. We're going to have a glass of that Dow red wine, baby. Yes. Heck yeah, we will.